I shot small bore competition all through high school and college, and I got so sick of shooting paper. And so the uh, first time I got to shoot any reactionary kind of a target in the practical shooting world, I was totally hooked, you know. Whether that be bowling pins or steel or whatever, you know. But yeah, there's just something about that. Hearing the sound of uh, bullets impacting steel, very satisfying. Welcome everybody to the Three Gun Show. This is a live edition of the Jeff Kirkwall Memorial Match, and uh, we have a new guest here, Ryan. This is uh, John Paul of JP Rivals. John, how you doing? Great. Good to be here. Good to see you, man. I want to thank you uh, for sponsoring this great match and uh, supporting the uh, the shooting sports as always. Well, we like to uh, put as much effort as possible behind it, and uh, in particular, like to get as many of the of the youth into this sport because that is the future. Absolutely, and we've got a, a couple of young people out here shooting this match. Uh, this time around it's gonna be fun to watch uh watch them in the shoot off here you bet brought this stuff along so we could just kind of talk nostalgically yeah. about it. Well, it was the very yeah. first recoil eliminator. Right. And, so, uh, uh, did you, you buy one or did I give it no, to you? No, you gave me one to I'm test because right. we we're going to test it on the, on the, uh, the full auto M16. And uh, that's what led to the evolution of the intermediate baffle because the very first one, when we uh, did mag dump after mag dump after mag dump, it didn't hold up to the full auto fire. Right. And uh, <laughs> so we ended up making it beefier and adding another baffle and whatnot. Yeah, that's when uh, I ran into uh, the anchor at Channel 9, Gary Rebstock at the time, and yeah. I got talking about these parts and and uh, told him about the recoil eliminator, and he decided to come down and film you shooting the machine gun, full auto, one-handed, and so yeah. that was, the uh, Channel 9 did a special on that. <laughs> it was like an infomercial on the, on the right. nightly news. You can never get that on the news today, but right. you couldn't, it was, you couldn't it was buy a positive that. gun story on the news. Right. Yeah. Yeah, Innovation, new product. Dave Kamek from our engineering department is also an expert on full auto weapons and suppressors. Let's watch him empty a 30 round magazine with one hand in an M16. With one hand. And I've had people come up to me at, at the SHOT Show and say, oh, I have one of the old ones where the brake is welded to the barrel. And I said, no, no, that's, it's actually threaded on the barrel. And they said, no, no, mine was one of the old ones where it was actually welded onto the barrel. I said, no, no, it's, 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 it's threaded on, but there was a nut that was welded. No, no, mine is welded on the barrel. It's just one piece It's just welded on the barrel. I said, well, come over here. Is it, and you look at, you take, the, and this one's not polished yet, but you look at the, at the barrel and you say, is it, was it like this thing goes, yeah, it was just like that. And you do this and unthread it and their eyes fall out. And it's like, whoa, you mean I've had this gun for seven years and I didn't even know that the brake was threaded on? John and his company sponsored my shooting for the last eight years or so. Um, I was a three gun competition shooter. I've got two sons that do the same thing. If you look at his business card, it doesn't say CEO, it sees head of product development, which is true. I mean, he's out there shooting, he sees use cases, that stuff that he would like to use, and then other people use it too. So that's kind of the fun part, seeing what he comes up with. Well, you know, as you improve, you know, as a competitive shooter, and you get to a point where you and you realize that 
there's something about your equipment that might be limiting your performance, well, you, you gotta have that. You know, that, that was, the first step was, the thing that was driving my, uh, my uh, vision of what the rifle had to be was to make sure that the rifle was never that limiting factor and that it was only my own ability behind the trigger and to, as the shooter was, was gonna be the final limiting factor in my performance. Yeah, initially, of course, we, uh, I started this little operation in, my, in the basement of my house. And uh, uh, of course, I, I was struggling. I was just uh, barely making it by. And, and I couldn't miss any, uh, any possible activity. So I would literally answer the phone 24 seven. If that phone rang at uh, 3.30 in the morning, I'd be up answering it. And, and it was always funny to get the reaction from people who were calling at that time to act, that they would get a live body. They just couldn't believe it. <laughs> I can remember with, you know, back at the house, at the end of the day, we'd, uh, half the time I'd stay and join, join the family for dinner. It was just the two of us working in the basement all day. And Kathy and the kids would come home, kids would come home from school. Uh, I started working at the company when I was in third grade, making $3 an hour after school. Worked out pretty well, um, but back then I was just doing retail packaging of things. Uh, and, you know, it was easy. I could put on my cartoons and have a snack after school. and you know, make a, a few dollars here and there. I think folding product instruction sheets is what I started doing. And I was not good at this. I suppose my brother, my brother was much more like detail oriented as a kid. I was more of the uh, stereotypical kind of uh, space cadet kid that just could not concentrate, so. You know, after we transitioned into the barn, we got to the point where I knew I, I could not handle everything myself. I really, I'm really just the idea guy. I'm, I, I really, stink at the administration aspect of the business. And so that's when I tricked my wife into leaving her job and coming on as a part-time position. She said, well, why don't you, you know, retire from your career and come and just help me? Part-time. Part yes, this is your chance to work part-time. So I said, sure. And I remember that first day walking out to the barn and thinking that I was gonna go upstairs and sit at that empty desk and do some work. And no, he said, we need help in the shipping. <laughs> so I went downstairs in the shipping, huh? I'd never shipped before, and I didn't even know what the product was. It wrapped around here as high as you can get. Yep. And then you're gonna wrap this finger like this. Wrapping around, finger out of the guard until you're ready to shoot. Imagine squeezing out a wash rag. That's about the tension you want on this hand is squeezing against this hand. Just imagine now that's the, that guy in the front there. That's me and the bad guy's got me and you need to take out the bad guy behind behind me. So shoot that, shoot that criminal that's got me uh, as hostage. All right, you saved me. <laughs> <laughs> this company wouldn't exist without my dad. He had the right idea at the right time in the industry, and like he could not have started JP Enterprises 10 years later, maybe even five years later. He really hit the right time and had the right vision when the industry was really young and needed someone to be a, a visionary for the AR platform. But that being said, I don't think the company would have survived without my mom. presentation is what I'm all about. He was okay with this big trash box full of whatever was considered packing material, whether it was newspaper, popcorn, different colors of um, peanuts. I, I just wasn't gonna have that. So I separated all the colors of the peanuts, put the popcorn here, put this here, and then I talked him into getting um, you know, some nice boxes because we were also shipping product out in um, cereal boxes, pizza boxes. <laughs> And I said, no, 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 no. Oh, they don't care. <laughs> I don't know, John's kind of a, a wild man, wildcat. Somebody's got to keep him in line. And uh, I think Kathy's managed to do that over the past 10 to 15 years. Somehow, hats off to her. And I know I couldn't manage him. She is the master of detail. Sometimes it's amazing how she keeps so many plates up in the air. And I think everyone who works with her can attest it. It's amazing how she'll like catch things that no one else catches and pick up these balls that have been dropped. 
If you open up the, your door and you have that package with our product in there, the reason why it's there is probably due to some system or something that she put into place. I liked being in the background and I just complimented. He designed, he shot. I, I kind of picture it like, you know, my, my dad's in the locomotive pouring on coal, going full speed, and my mom is just able to lay the track in time so that the entire thing doesn't go careening off into to oblivion. When I first started this, I always looked at it as really a temporary thing. And then one year when, when we were back when we were working out of the barn, you know, I remember for so well it was New Year's Eve and I sent everybody home and uh, my two boys were there and they were, they were working for us at the time and, and they also viewed it as a, just a stepping stone in their lives, you know, before they would have a real career someplace. And, but it hit me that evening. I realized that the company had a life of its own and transcended my involvement with it. And I, I brought him in and I said, I want you both to start thinking about, about JP as your career because there is a great career to be had here. That's when it really seemed like, yeah, this was my, my company too. I, I like the type of business we have. I like the fact that it's our baby that's grown up. I mean, it's so comforting. We just have the greatest group of employees. I come here to work, you know, it's the part like I go to shoot matches. I like shooting and I like matches, but the people is half the reason I go. Same thing here. You know, JP's awesome to make a good product, but the people are half the reason I show up every day on Monday. I look forward to it, you know, when I get a long weekend away, I look forward to coming back to work. And now, I mean, as my wife and I have stepped back to some degree for various reasons, it's even more apparent that the company is an entity, a living entity in itself, and the philosophy that, that we have imparted to it has, has continued through time and, and will continue. Here at JP Enterprises, we'll continue to pioneer new concepts for small arms applications because we actually use our products. We are small arms professionals. JP Enterprises has come to dominate the tactical rifle competition arena. Now more and more of our products are being selected by law enforcement and military users to help defend our communities and our country. I like to think that if one of our soldiers or police officers comes home safely because of an idea or product that we provide, that's my biggest paycheck. Uh, the place now has its own momentum and uh, I don't have to be pushing that big ball up the hill like I was for many years. Now it really, really has a, a tremendous momentum all of its own. And uh, so many of the, the, the employees and our sons, uh, they, uh, they are personally involved in it and take pride in it themselves. And that's what it takes. It always made me realize that you don't own a place like this. You just sign up to be the temporary caretaker of it. 